Fellas, we are reviewing the hand cannon, also known as the chode. I mean, look at this thing. Huh? Now, I know a lot of people weren't excited about this hand cannon because you saw the archetype. You saw a precision frame, 180 round per minute, and you immediately thought this thing is shite. But I got to tell you, I've been impressed. And even though 180 round per minute hand cannons are not the best, this one is really, really good. Today, guys, we're going to be going over this hand cannon. It is dropping from Iron Banner. It is the new hand cannon for this season there. And honestly, there's a lot of similarities here between this hand cannon and trust. Matter of fact, the audio profile for both of those sound very, very similar. On top of that, this weapon is also a solar weapon. Now, we got to play with a number of different roles yesterday. I wanted to try everything out on Frontier. I wanted to know how it felt just in terms of consistency. So, we had like an eye at the storm roll. I even landed this really high range roll with both Iron Reach, which substantially throws up our range with Rabbit Hit, which is actually a pretty good god roll considering Rabbit Hit helps out with that stability loss. And this one had like up to 84 range. We even played with a couple quirky rolls, such as Adagio, which guys, don't forget, Adagio just got a buff this past season. It does a whopping 30% more damage, and for hand cannons, it only diminishes our rate of fire by 15%. Essentially, Frontier's Cry here with Adagio makes it a 3-tap in 0.8 seconds. And then, of course, Kill Clip. That is the other damage dealing perk. This, of course, elevates the damage to easily make this weapon a 3-tap. And we've talked highly about things like Survivor's Epitaph because it can roll with things like Kill Clip. And when you have things like that, and it can 3-tap, you're looking at a 0.67 time to kill value. We're talking like Luna's How, Not Forgotten. That's what made both of those weapons so deadly, was because of that TTK. Now, before we really get into the role that I would suggest for this weapon, after trying out all the different roles that we tried, I do want to mention some benefits of 180 round per minute hand cannons. Number one, they're consistent, man. They are by far the most consistent hand cannons. If you have trouble landing crits, if you have issues with landing shots mid-flinch with a hand cannon, if you want a hand cannon to pretty much just perform for you, then a precision frame hand cannon will do that. And no better time to use one than now with the full auto mod, which I know is supposed to become an accessibility thing, but Bungie has still not done that yet. You put on full auto on one of these 180s, and my God, does it pepper opponents. Number two, though, it's a precision frame. One of the most beautiful things about being a precision frame, it does not require Icarus. You have in-air accuracy with the weapon. Just about every other hand cannon in the game, what do you do? You slap on Icarus. You know you're going to be in the air at some point, and you cannot risk losing out on that accuracy. Frontier's Cried, though, being a precision frame, says, hey, you don't need Icarus. So that full auto mod, go right ahead. That free hand grip, that targeting mod, whatever. Rock it. Now, some specific benefits about Frontier in comparison to other popular 180s. Survivor's Epitaph probably being the most popular. You also had the 7th Seraph Officer Revolver, which is a very good one, especially in PvE. And then, of course, Vulpecula, which we also added to the list here as a comparison. And as you can see here, how superior Frontier is in range, in stability. It's handling only comes coming in just slightly less than that of Survivor's Epitaph, but everything else is top notch, a bar above the rest. And again, Survivor's Epitaph, we did a review way back when, and we talked very highly of that hand cannon with the right roll and of course a full auto mod. What's crazy is that Frontier's Crying does what Survivor's does even better. Now let's talk about the God roll because we have some new traits on this weapon that we've never seen before. Compulsive Reloader, where essentially reload above 70% of the magazine will grant you 50 reload speed. Pretty nice. This is a pretty thick boy magazine magazine, so if you are constantly reloading, that increase in reload speed is, well, it's noticeable. Adaptive Munitions, where the weapon adapts its damage output and effectiveness against energy shields that don't match the weapon's damage type. A very specific trait, you also add Stats for All, which, by the way, Stats for All and One for All together, fantastic synergy, and then, of course, Steady Hands, where kills provide handling for all weapons for a short duration. Let me give you what felt the best for me, and the trait combinations that really paid off. First up, an obvious one, Tunnel Vision Kill Clip. Listen, guys, the only con 180 round per minute hand cannons have going for them is their time to kill. Their base time to kill being one second. Although a very forgiving time to kill, by the way, but with kill clip, especially being guided with tunnel vision, which is disgusting. Upon getting a kill and reloading, you'll have a weapon with plus 20 aim assist, plus 20% accuracy, and the ability to three tap in 0.67 seconds. Seems like an obvious one. Now, if you didn't want to do the tunnel vision route, you can also do rapid hit and kill clip. Still a fantastic combination. Now, I know this seems like the obvious go-to choice. Personally, though, guys, I fell in love with the Adagio roll. Because this weapon has such a big magazine, once you get Adagio going, it requires four shots, right? To get a kill. Boom. You got nine shots left. That is three more easy kills you can get with Adagio as long as you are landing crits. Now, I will say, it'll catch you off guard a little bit because this weapon goes from shooting 180 rounds per minute to now shooting as a 150. But as you begin to get more and more used to Adagio, Adagio will become second nature for you. You're going to anticipate that drop there in rate of 
fire. And honestly, guys, out of all the weapons that have Adagio on it, hand cannons perform the best. And with it having that 30% buff, you are looking at a 0.8 time to kill value with Frontier. And listen, I know that's still more than that of Kill Clip, but the fact is, is that you can lay on the trigger. You can chain kill to kill. You can literally keep the pressure on the opposing team without ever having to let up. And there's something to be said about Adagio too. Even though it does slow that rate of fire and that might mess you up just slightly, landing those three taps was really easy at this rate of fire once you got the pacing down. Now, the combinations that work well with Adagio, obviously rapid hit Adagio is really good. Steady hands in Adagio is also very, very good. I really like the idea of steady hands in Adagio. Literally, the weapon gets a bump there in his handling and for everything on top of that. And as you're chaining kills, the beautiful thing about Adagio is that it reprocs into itself. So those are some big benefits here with that perk. Now, some other combinations to consider is the max range roll that I got, which can be just any range boosting barrel perk plus accurate rounds plus iron reach and rapid hit. That combination is a pretty interesting one because rapid hit does really help out with that stability drop off and iron reach does greatly boost that range. It's actually pretty stupid. This weapon with things like full bore, accurate rounds, iron reach, rapid hit can reach a range stat of 97, giving it a damage fall off of 34 meters. Now understand that may not sound that impressive, but for the likes of a 180 round per minute hand cannon, that is very, very good. I mean, the highest that you saw from things like survivors epita was 30 meters. So you got a whopping four whole meters that you can accomplish here with frontier. On top of that, having that range stat is beautiful to look at. So that max range roll is one to consider. No, you're not really doing anything to drop that time to kill value, but this weapon with that range will allow it to be able to consistently duel with the likes of pulse rifles and other hand cannons, even the most max range 140 round per minute hand cannons. We did a cantata review the other day, and this range roll right here can definitely compete if you're not willing to close the gap. I do suggest though closing the gap, and even though iron reach does boost that range up, and even though this is a precision frame, so you don't necessarily need a bunch of stability, it still hurts. It's still noticeable. Now the other trait to consider on this weapon to me is Eye of the Storm. We had Eye of the Storm. It was working really, really well when it would proc. It's at 150 HP threshold. Those bumps there in handling and accuracy is really nice. Combine that with the likes of rapid hits or maybe even steady hands. Do not overlook that for just a consistent dueling weapon. And you'll be amazed how many times Eye of the Storm grants you those crit shots. Now, what is the role that I want? Again, out of everything I just listed here, I know it's crazy, but I want that Adagio rabbit hit roll or Adagio steady hands. That is actually what I fell in love with yesterday. I loved how Adagio felt. I do understand most people are going to want that kill clip rabbit hit or that kill clip tunnel vision roll. For PvE though, I think it's pretty clear that both one for all and stats for all is the way to go for this hand cannon. And even though this hand cannon only has a 2.5 rating for PvE, I think that one for all stats for all roll on this hand cannon with that large of a magazine, oh yeah, I'm going to use it. And that's exactly what I'm going to be grinding for for the rest of this week. So guys, that is our review there for Frontier's Cry. It took us 2,000 tokens to get all these rolls. Grind down an Iron Banner this week. And oh, and by the way, Skulking Wolf is the origin trait that is on these Iron Banner weapons. Where during the hunt, when you capture the zones, final blows of this weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from the opposing radar. Again, I haven't really seen where it's been overwhelmingly beneficial, but we'll be talking about that trait a little more this week as we continue playing Iron Banner and seeing how much value that trait brings to us. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.